Hey everybody, continuing on with our, our series in air conditioning. I uh, want to do a video now on uh, your uh, O-rings, seals, and gaskets, and hoses. Uh, a lot of it's going to be very similar uh, on how to, and I want to kind of talk about failure a little bit too uh, as we go along, and that kind of gives you the idea of why and uh, procedures of how you should be um, installing uh, either the seals, the gaskets, uh, and also your hoses. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. All right, so to start off with it, it really a lot of it's very common, but some of us, uh, some of it is where I want to kind of dig deeper into uh, failure and talk a little bit about that too. So let's go and uh, start talking with O-rings. Now, O-rings are the ceiling surface uh, that is between uh, fittings uh, and uh, they can be damaged by install insulation and installation and they can also have problems with uh you know wrong uh, types of o-rings too so they're kind of like a donut shaped object uh they're generally made kind of elastic wise and there's not one fits all type material there are uh some of the uh o-ring material out there that go a multiple range of different types of uh, applications, but some of the O-rings, if you use them in, like uh, you use an old uh, O-ring that would be on something on an old R12 system, the actual refrigerant oil might attack it. They may not have the heat resistance as the newer type O-rings too. So we wanna make sure we have the correct O-ring for the job. Uh, why do they fail? There's uh, a lot of times is you know improper uh, install installation or using the wrong O ring where they uh, they just kind uh, it's almost right and you actually damage it that way. Uh, what you're seeing here is a big old chunk out of it, and it is probably because it was installed incorrectly. There may be some foreign debris that was in there during that uh, installation process. Uh, you need to really lubricate them before go, uh, they're installed too. Uh, I normally take a little bit of refrigerant oil that is for that particular model. And I kind of lube it up a little bit of that before I actually put this, uh, the seal in place. And then you have a little bit of the lube also uh, as you install it. So it makes a nice clean fit. Uh, the other things you got to think about is, you know, like I said before, the wrong uh, size, you're not following procedures on how to do it. You could actually have one that's overheated because it's not, it doesn't have the same temp range uh, as you go along too. Uh, you know, the, they, they may have a problem with the actual pressure on it that the, the also uh, I've seen uh, cases where uh, when you're installing it and you're tightening it down, either they don't tighten it down enough. Uh, normally uh, it's something similar to it. Don't go by what the manufacturer says, please don't go 100% by what I say, but I normally go, uh, bring them down to about, uh, and there should be, there's a torque on it too, about, finger tight and then about a half turn more and then I'll check my torque on it at the, at the, at the end of it also. So you can actually tell if uh, you're going too much. You can actually start feeling the threads on the uh, on the uh, on the on the thread on the surfaces starting to pull a little bit. You, then you know oh now we we actually had a problem there. So again, it could, you know, failures can also be due to uh, the different types of material too. So, or the heat ranges, uh, or the, you know, like the gas or 
the oils that's in place too. So just depending on that, you can actually look at the oil ring and start going, holy moly, this was not the correct. And you'll actually see either it starts uh, ballooning up more than uh, than you would um, you would you shouldn't see, and start, you know and things like that. All right, well I went too fast. All right, so uh, you know all ring materials. Like I said before, there's different types of them. There was the old black uh, uh, o rings. Uh, they're uh, kind of like a nitrile ru rubber to them. But they uh, had a, a temp range from a negative uh, 22 degrees to a, uh, a, a maximum heat of 210. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you start getting some of those temperatures or surface temperatures, then you can actually have uh, a problem. Uh, it, it may be getting too cold too, uh, that causes that problem also. So uh, there's also some other, uh, types of O-rings out there. Uh, Viton is another one. Uh, sometimes they're brown. Um, they may be black or green. Uh, it's a negative four to 392 uh, uh, degrees max amount of it. Uh, and then we have, you know, white, orange. We have all kinds of uh, colors, but the ones that I'm really used to is the ones that are uh, blue and green. Now, these are a, 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 a very well bulletproof uh, O-rings. Uh, I'm trying to remember the uh, actual uh, makeup of them, but you'll see them in the kits, and they have a really good uh, temp range. Uh, you know, somewhere around a negative uh, 80 degrees to uh, to 350 degrees, and then there's also the old armored uh, O-rings, where they have an actual, uh, I should say, ceiling rings. They actually have uh, some aluminum to them on the outer side and the ceiling and in inside. And that's normally on some of the older compressors that they had back, back in the time. They, they call them armor O-rings. And generally, they were, um, a, they could be black, uh, blackish, but they, they normally have a temp range between a, a negative 99 to a 400, a 401 degree, somewhere around that uh, area. So they were uh, very well put together. Uh, anyways, uh, installing wise, you wanna make sure you follow, always follow uh, the manufacturer uh, procedure. If there's a special tool that you need, you need to be using it. Uh, then you wanna make sure they're well lubricated. And you can either, uh, what I do is I use a little bit of the refrigerant oil. There's also some other types of material that you can actually use, uh, but I tend to like to use the, uh, uh, the yeah, th there's different lubricants you can actually buy, I should put it that way. But I generally like to use the, uh, the uh, refrigerant oil, the, a little bit of the refrigerant oil, because it's already going to be uh, a kind of contacting to that. So that you know that should be pretty good. If you use incorrect oils, like you use a mineral oil, so it could actually eat the rubber away. So you don't want that to happen because you start getting it to balloon up or actually uh, deteriorate, then you're going to actually have a problem too. And you should always, always, always store your O-rings in a container, a plastic container that can actually shut and make sure, uh, you know, I tend to wear uh, gloves when I uh, handle uh, O-rings and like that, because you, even your hand has a little bit of oil on it too. Not that it's going to really uh, damage it or might, but I, I tend to like to make sure it's almost uh, uh, no contact between me and the O-ring. Uh, maybe I had uh, something to eat for lunch and it gets, con it gets you know, you know, transfer over to the O-ring, and then will you know and it could possibly uh, deteriorate the O-ring too. So that's just kind of something I, I tend to do. Uh, moving on to a gaskets, we kind of covered a, a little bit of the O-ring and also the uh, 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 it's kind of the seals too, because all rings and seals are pretty similar. Uh, there they there is a little bit of difference to them, but uh, kind of similar. A uh, lot of the seals actually ha have the same makeup, uh, you know, when we talk about O-rings and all. 
But now I want to get into a little bit about gaskets. Now, this really depends on where the gasket's located. Is it on exterior towards the ceiling surface, on the hoses to the compressor? Uh, is it uh, internal to the compressor itself? So depending on where it's located, always follow the manufacturer's uh, procedure. When you have a, a, a gasket, a seal, uh, a you know, a, a ring or anything like that, you want to make sure, uh, you know, to um, especially on your compressors and all, you want to torque all the uh, the bolts down to specification and always use new stuff. Don't use old gaskets. Don't use old seals. Uh, I, I've seen this happen in the past and it's always been a, a bad outcome. So always follow the procedure torque them down to specifications. That way we, we know we have, always look at your mating surfaces too. Uh, if there's uh, a ding in them or, uh, you know, there's been some actual, uh, like we've talked before, get a little bit of moisture in the AC system. We can actually have some etching going on. Uh, you may have some surfaces that you either have to uh, somehow uh, condition or you may have to change pieces out. And, and down into the hoses. Now, depending if you buy hoses from a, a reputable uh, manufacturer, and th this is where it gets a little bit, uh, you really need to get a, a reputable manufacturer to do it. Uh, but uh, if you get some... Um, off brand type uh, manufacturers, you may not get the correct fit. And uh, a lot of your manufacturers uh, that make hoses out there that are reputable, they have the exact measurements and it makes it a lot easier to buy hose and it will fit properly. The other way is actually um, building your own hoses. Uh, you can buy kits uh, like I have over in the corner here. This is a kit that will uh, help you uh, start your process of making hoses. Now they are a barrier hose and these barriers keep the, the re refrigerant gas inside or, or even the liquid gas. You, you wanna make sure that you use a barrier type hose. If you're using, and, and I hope you don't do this, if you're using a regular like fuel line or vacuum line, it will not work. You, they will have, and believe me, I've seen this happen in the past and it's really sad, but you also need a crimping tool. You'll notice that I, I didn't really blow these up, but these are fittings that have an actual crimping area. These crimping areas actually go over the hose. It's a little bit of a pain to put them into the hose, but the hose, really needs to be uh, very, very tight. There's a barb fitting on the actual, uh, the lines uh, that go into the rubber part and that needs to really have a good grip on it. And then you're gonna use a crimping machine or a cr some kind of a crimper. This, no, I'm not talking about just taking and hitting it with a hammer or anything like that too. Like I said, I've seen some strange things. But you want to make sure it crimps uh, evenly and tightly and gives you a nice, beautiful crimp like you would have on these hoses here. So they've been crimped properly. But all in all, even if you are, um, whatever process you're doing, you know, whether you're changing O-rings, seals, gaskets, or even uh, changing uh, hoses, compressors, uh, your you know, receiver dryer or your accumulator, your fixed orifice uh, a T, a TXVs, or you're doing a fixed orifice two, whatever repair you're doing, evaporator, condenser, whatever, you always want to do final checks. And uh, my final steps are always checking for leaks. And whether you do it with soap and water, I've seen this, it works very, very well, especially if you're under pressure. Uh, some of your machines will go into a vacuum check. Uh, that's another way of checking to make sure the, you know, whatever installation you've done, uh, like I said, seals, uh, O-rings, uh, gaskets, or hoses, you know, compressor, whatever, 
you, that's a good way of doing it as long as it's under pressure. You can pressurize if you don't want to lose the refrigerant. Uh, you can pressurize it with the nitrogen. When we get into the leak check, I'll start talking about that too. You can actually ch uh, leak check it with a fluorescent dyes. Uh, please remember to buy uh, a, a dye kit that's uh, uh, compatible with the refrigerant you're using. Or, or you can actually go into leak detecting, whichever really works for you. That you know, should be your procedure. I'm not a big fan of dyes, but it, it is uh, used in the field. All right, so I hope you like this uh, video on uh, some basics uh, understanding of, you know, replacing seals, O-rings, gaskets, and uh, hoses. We'll get deeper into things as we go along in the AC system. So if you liked it, please um, like it down, you know, in, in, uh, down below and make sure you subscribe. I would really appreciate it. All right. That's all for now. And we'll be talking soon. Bye.